Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome viewers to the NPTEL lecture series on the calculus of variations. This is the ninth lecture of the series. In the last lecture, we discussed several examples as applications of the Euler's theorem and in the, in the various example series of uh, applications of the theorem. First example, we considered i y, the functional i y as integral 0 to 1 y prime square minus y square dx with the, the adjoining conditions y 0 equal to 0 and y 1 equal to 1. Comparing it with the general form of the functional i y equal to a integral x 1 to x 2 f x y y prime dx, we have f as y prime square minus y square and in this we Euler's equation implies that y plus y double prime equal to 0. This differential equation, this is a second order differential equation and so y is to be assumed that uh, admissible functions will have twice continuous differentiability of uh, this y is to be assumed here and so y x is the solution of uh, this differential equation y plus y double prime equal to 0 given by a cos x plus b sin x and the given conditions then imply a equal to 0 and b equal to uh, 1 over sin 1 and so we get as extremals y x equal to sin x by sin 1. In the next example we had considered i y equal to integral 0 to 1 y prime square plus x y dx. So, here f is y prime square plus x y and so Euler's equation f y minus d by d x f y prime equal to 0 implies that x minus 2 y double prime equal to 0. So, we get uh, y equal to x cube by 12 plus a x plus b and these a and b constants will have to be determined by the given conditions. So, we get y 0 equal to 0 implies b equal to 0 and y 1 equal to 1 implies that a equal to 11 by 12. So, we finally get y x equal to 1 by 12 times x cube plus 11. So, that the, this is the extremal and in the next example we had considered i y equal to integral x 1 to x 2 of y square d x and here the given conditions are y at x 1 equal to a and y at x 2 equal to b where a and b uh, will have to be uh, chosen suitably and here f is y square and so Euler's equation f y minus d by d x f y prime equal to 0 implies that y identically 0. So, if a and b are not on the x axis uh, that means a and b are not equal to 0 0 respectively then uh, we uh, have these x 1 a and x 2 b not on the uh, x axis and then th there is no solution of this problem. Uh, in the space of continuous functions. Only solution to this problem is a discontinuous function given by this figure here and so we do not have extremal in general in the space of uh, admissible curves. Here in the next example we considered i y equal to integral x 1 to x 2 m uh, plus n y prime m and n are functions of x and y here. So, f is m plus n y prime and so Euler's equation implies that m y minus n x equal to 0. And so, here uh, this will have to be solved for x uh, y or y as a function of x and so the solution of this uh, equation is a curve and in general it may not pass through these uh, given points x 1 y 1 and x 2 y 2. So, there will not be a solution of this problem in general and if it has then there is only one curve which is passing through those two points. And in the second case when m y minus n x is an identity 
m y minus n x equal to 0, if it is an identity, then uh, we see that the integrand can be written as m d x plus n d y and it is an exact differential. And so, by the property of exact differential, uh, there exists a function u of x y such that m the total derivative of u is equal to m d x plus n d y. And so, here this integral finally, uh, becomes the values of u at these endpoints. So, u x 2 comma y of x 2 and minus u of x 1 comma y of x 1. And so, this is a fixed value and so, this is not a problem of uh, the calculus of variations. Next, we considered i y equal to integral 0 to 1 y square plus x square y prime d x. Here, y 0 equal to a and y 1 equal to b, then f is y square plus x square y prime and so, Euler's equation implies that y equal to x. So, if uh, this 0 a and 1 b are not on the diagonal y equal to x, then there will not be any solution here. So, it is only for the case when a equal to 0 and b equal to 1, we have this uh, y equal to x as an extremal of this problem. In the next problem, next example, we considered i y equal to integral x 1 to x 2 y plus x y prime d x and again with those same conditions y at x 1 equal to a and y at x 2 equal to b. f is here y plus x y prime and we see that here. Uh, we get m y minus n x reduces to identity here 1 minus 1 equal to 0. And so, here we see that this is an exact differential which can be seen that it is actually uh, d of x y and so, we get this integral x 1 to x 2 d of x y as x y evaluated at x 1 to x 2. So, that is x 2 y at x 2 minus x 1 at y at x 1 which is a fixed quantity and so, this is not a problem of the calculus of variation. So, that is where we had uh, arrived at the uh, in the last lecture. Now, we consider here special cases of uh, this functional. Of uh, the functional i y which is actually equal to integral x 1 to x 2 f x y y prime d x. So, when some of the variables are not present, then we get special cases. The first special case we consider here that Here f, see in general f is function of x, y, y prime. So, let us say this is only function of y prime. So, here x and y do not appear explicitly. In f, and so in this case uh, we have f y minus d by d x of f y prime equal to 0 implies that d by d x of f y prime equal to 0. Now, this is only function of uh, y prime and so this implies that f y prime y prime y double prime equal to 0. So, either so this implies if so if this f y prime y prime this is also a function of y prime if this is not equal to 0 then y double prime must be equal to 0 which implies that y equal to a x plus b. So, we get a straight line straight line as extremal and uh, so here we get family of straight lines for different values of a and v we will get different lines and then these 
a and b are to be determined by the given condition. So, here the extremal is a straight line if this f y prime y prime is not equal to 0. If this f y prime y prime which is a function of y prime is 0, then we find the roots of this equation. So, let us say let k be a root a real root then we have that is then y prime equal to k such that f y prime y prime k equal to 0. So, for any root of this equation uh, like this f y prime y prime k equal to 0, we get y prime k. So, uh, y prime equal to k. So, y prime equal to k implies that y equal to k x plus some constant c here. So, here this c is to be then determined by the given condition here and k is determined from this equation again. So, again we get a straight line as an extremal. So, in uh, all these cases where uh, this uh, f y prime y prime is not equal to 0, we get a, an extremal as uh, a straight line and if f y prime y prime is 0, then we find the roots of this equation and let us say if y prime equal k, if k is a root of this then y prime then y prime equal to k and we get y equal to k x plus c, again we get a straight line as an extremal of this uh, the Euler's equation as a solution of this. Now, here let us see uh, various examples of uh, this case. The first one is let us say this is 9.1. So, here this L or length of y is given by x 1 to x 2 square root 1 plus y prime square d x. Here as before we have these two points a and b and this is the curve joining these two points and this is x 1, this is x 2, this point is x 1 y 1 and this is x 2 y 2 and so this gives you the length of this curve. Now, here uh, we have since this is a function of so f here is square root 1 plus y prime square and this is a function of y prime only like this. So, we get here. So, we should have f y prime y prime y double prime as 0. So, that is uh, the Euler's equation and uh, so in this case here f y prime is 1 over square root 1 plus y prime square the 2 in and then times 2 y prime. So, 2 will cancel. So, we will have y prime over square root 1 plus y prime square. Then again we differentiate partially here. Here of course, it is a only y prime is a variable. So, it is ordinary derivative of that with respect to y prime. So, we get here uh, 1 over so, like this. So, we get here 1 
and uh, into this 1 plus y prime square minus y prime over to 1 over this square root 1 plus y prime square and then y prime here over you get 1 plus y prime square. So, this becomes so here we get again see you will have this as 1 plus y prime square minus y prime square over 1 plus y prime square to the power 3 by 2 but 1 over 1 plus y prime square to the power 3 by 2. So, this is not 0 and therefore, hence therefore, this f y prime y prime y double prime equal to 0 implies that y double prime equal to 0 which implies that y equal to a x plus b. So, we get extremal as straight line as expected. So, the another case of this we have seen that like if we take T as time taken by a particle moving along y, then we know that this is given by x 1 to x 2 d s by v, where this v is the velocity of the particle along the moving along the curve. And so, in general this v is a function of x y uh, y prime usually, but in particular case if we take let us say if v is a function of y prime only. So, in general uh, this let me write the general dependence. So, here usually this v would be a function of x, y and y prime and so this would be like x 1 to x 2 square root 1 plus y prime square over v x y y prime uh, d x. So, that is the general form of the uh, functional which gives you the time uh, along a given curve here. So, you have these two points a and b and particle is moving along this curve y x and here v is the velocity which is a function of uh, these three variables in general. So, if v x y y prime is function of y prime only like in the case where it is moving in a plane uh, where then uh, gravitational force is not playing any role then it will uh, velocity will be uh, just v uh, y prime only. So, that can be taken as the function of y prime. So, in this particular case we have T as x 1 to x 2 square root 1 plus y prime square over here v of y prime. So, here again this f is just function of so in general x y y prime this is function of y prime only which is nothing but square root 1 plus y prime square over v of y prime. So, here in this case so we so as so therefore, the an extremal will be a straight line Now, the next one so it was nine point one here. Okay. 
So, let us call it 9.2. So, in this case, if we consider this T y as x 1 to x 2 square root 1 plus y prime square and then velocity as a function of x, let us take here x itself for particular case. So, v of x y y prime is x here. So, in this case here f is function of x and y prime only which is square root 1 plus y prime square over x. So, this is case 2. So, let us say this is case 2 where f is function of x and y prime only. So, this is an example of this case. So, here how do we uh, do this? How, uh, so, here uh, Euler's equation is which is f y minus d by d x f y prime equal to 0 implies that minus d by d x of f y prime as before, because this f since f y is 0. And so, uh, we get this f y prime equal to which is function of x and y prime as the first integral. So, this Euler's equation gets uh, integrated easily here we get f y prime as a function of x y prime equal to c 1 and then once more we integrate it to get the extremals. So, let us apply this case to this example. So, here we have f equal to square root 1 plus y prime square over x. So, here uh, so f y prime equal to c 1 implies that 1 over x then 1 over 2 root 1 plus y prime square into then 2 y prime equal to c 1. So, we get 2 cancels. So, y prime over square root 1 plus y prime square equal to c 1 x. So, here we will uh, try to get parametric form of the equation. So, x. So, this implies that x equal to 1 over c 1 y prime over square root 1 plus y prime square. So, we substitute y prime equal to something and then uh, we will uh, try to get the solution here. So, if you take y prime equal to let y prime equal to tan t, t is a parameter here, then we see that x equal to then x equal to 1 over c 1 tan t over here square root 1 plus tan square t. So, that is over this is sec square t. So, sec t second t and this is sin t t upon cos t into sec t. So, this cancels. So, you get 1 over c 1 here. So, c 1 tilde sin t. So, that will be the x solution here and so, now to get y solution here we know that this d y by d t equal to d y by d x upon 
d t by d x by d t. So, that this is tan t and here this d y by d t uh, d y by d t will be then So, d x by d t x is this. So, that will be c 1 tilde here. So, cos t. So, that will be x equal to c 1 sin t and d y by. So, 1. So, this will be actually let me. So, here d y by d t is d y by d x into d x by d t, which will be d y by d t up into here uh, d x by d t is c 1 tilde cos t and so uh, d y by d x sorry, which is c 1 tilde uh, d y by d x is tan t into cos t. So, that is c 1 tilde sin t and therefore, y equal to c 1 tilde cos t plus c 2. So, we get uh, this as solution here and so, we have x equal to c 1 tilde sin t and y equal to c 1 tilde cos t plus c 2. So, eliminating t from here gives you x square plus y minus c 2 square equal to c 1 tilde square. So, we get circles as the extremals. The family of circles, two parameter family of circles here and then c 1 and c 2 to r to be determined by the given conditions. So, here we get uh, these circles as the extremals for this case. Now, the next case where uh, we get this f which is in general x y y prime which is a function of y and y prime only. x variable is missing here. x does not appear explicitly. So, here f y minus d by d x of f y prime will be equal to in this case f y minus d by d x of uh, this d by d x which is a function of y and y prime. And so, this is equal to f y minus f y y prime minus f y sorry this is f y prime. So, let me rewrite it again. So, this f y which is also a function of y and y prime and minus d by d x of f y comma y prime and so, this is equal to f y 
we will not write the dependence over y and y prime here explicitly and so this is d by d x of this thing which is opening this uh, here. So, we get f y and then since this is a total derivative. So, here variables will have to be then differentiated with respect to x. So, f y partial derivative of with respect to y and then y differentiated with respect to x. So, you get y prime minus here sorry this is f y prime. So, y prime y and then you have y prime minus f y prime y prime y double prime like this. So, if we multiply this thing by y prime since this is actually equal to 0 this is equal to 0. So, if y prime is not equal to 0 then you see that y prime this here will be then y prime f y minus f y prime y y prime minus f y prime y prime y double prime this is 0. So, writing in expanded form. So, you have y prime f y minus f y prime y y prime square minus f y prime y prime into we will write these ok y prime y double prime equal to 0. So, let us write this also in the same order f y and y prime. So, multiplying by y prime uh, we get uh, this. Now, we observe that this d by d x of f minus y prime f y prime is actually equal to since f is a function of y and y prime. So, here f y y prime min plus f y prime y double prime and here the second term minus first we so we get f y prime and then y double prime. So, here we have differentiated y prime and this taken as factor here out and then y minus y prime and derivative of f y prime with respect to x totally. So, here that will be f y prime y and y prime. So, you get y prime square here minus y prime and then f y prime y prime and y double prime. So, that is what we will write it here equal to 0. So, we see that these two are the same because this cancels here and this is same thing as let us say this is 9.3 and this is 9.4 rather 9.2. 9.3. So, from 9.3 and 9.4 we see that this first integral the first integral of Euler's equation in this case when f x y y prime is actually f y and y prime.
function of y and y prime only is given by f minus y prime f y prime equal to c 1. So, first integral is readily available here and then uh, this can be integrated once more to get the extremals. So, let us see uh, this is the this case in certain examples. So, here say example 9.5 So, here we consider the case where this x axis, y axis and z axis and let us say there is a curve given here, this is from x 1 to x 2 and then this curve is rotated about x axis. So, we get like this surface generated like this. Now, here if we consider d s element here and then we see that this strip d s strip is rotated like this. So, area of this d s strip will be given by uh, 2 pi y d s, y is the vertical length here. So, area of the area of uh, strip d s revolved about x axis is 2 pi y d s. So, total area surface area will be given by 2 pi integral x 1 to x 2 y d s. So, this can be seen like you have x y. So, this curve was like this, this is d s element here and this is y distance here. So, this gets rotated like this, this d s element. So, therefore, this is 2 pi x 1 to x 2, this is here x 1 and this is x 2. Y d s is given by 1 plus y prime square d x. So, that is the surface area of this of the object obtained by revolving this curve about the x axis. So, here f is so x y y prime in general is given by 2 pi y square root 1 plus y prime square which is function of y and y prime only. So, we can see that hence the first integral of Euler's equation is given by f minus y prime f of y prime equal to c 1, which gives us in this example. So, 2 pi we will observe in c 1 itself and we will have y square root 1 plus y prime square minus so, let us write 2 pi also here minus uh, y prime and then this. So, 2 pi 
f y prime means 1 over 2 root 1 plus y prime square and then 2 y prime equal to c 1. So, this 2 will cancel with this and 2 pi taken on the other side. So, we will have y square root 1 plus y prime square minus y prime square over square root 1 plus y prime square equal to c 1 over 2 pi which is written as c 1 tilde. So, here 2 pi y should also be there which I missed. into y prime, y prime this factor is coming from here. So, taking the LCM here we get this term will cancel. So, we will have y into 1 plus y prime square minus y y prime square equal to c 1 tilde which implies that y over square root 1 plus y prime square equal to c 1. So, here again we uh, write in the form we take parametric representation. So, we have y over square root 1 plus y prime square equal to c 1 tilde and if we take let y prime equal to sin hyperbolic t, we see that this implies that y equal to c 1 tilde you get cos hyperbolic t. So, y comes out in this parametric form and now to get uh, d x by d t is d x over d y into d y by d t like this. So, this d x by d t comes out to be, so this is 1 over sin hyperbolic t and d y by d t is, because y is this you get c 1 tilde sin hyperbolic t and so this you get only c 1 tilde. So, hence x comes out to be c 1 tilde t plus c 2. Thus, in the parametric form we have x equal to c 1 tilde t plus c 2 and y equal to c 1 tilde cos hyperbolic t. Now, this t can be eliminated here. We get y as a function of x this c 1 tilde cos hyperbolic x minus c 2 over c 1 tilde. So, writing in a standard form we can write that y equal to a cos hyperbolic x plus some b over a like that. So, that is the 
form of solution which tells us that it is catenary. So, this is a catenary. which is and the surface thus the surface of revolution is called catenoid So, in this case the extremals are catenary here, those are the curves which will minimize the surface area. Now, we come to the problem of Brachis Tricone which was introduced in the first lecture. So, here Recall that T y is x 1 to x 2 square root 1 plus y prime square, we had got root 2 g here and then root y. So, over root y d x. So, here f is 1 over root 2 g root 1 plus y prime square over y. So, this is again a function of y and y prime. So, the first integral of of Euler's equation in this case is f minus y prime f y prime equal to c 1. So, here you will have 1 over root 2 g square root 1 plus y prime square over y minus y prime over root y we can take out here and you have 1 over 2 root 1 plus y prime square and again 2 y prime equal to c 1, 1 over root 2 g here also. So, taking this 1 over root 2 g on the other side merging it with c 1 and simplifying this we get the following in this case. So, this Okay, so, let us write it 1 plus y prime square over root y here minus you get this 2 cancels here y prime square over root y into root 1 plus y prime square is c 1 tilde here. And we can see that in this case you will have 1 over root y is taken out and then you have 1 plus y prime square minus y prime square over root 1 plus y prime square equal to c 1 tilde. So, this is cancelled here. So, we get 1 over squaring it we get y into 1 plus y prime square equal to c 1 tilde or inverting it we get y into 1 plus y prime square equal to let us say constant a, where a is 1 over c 1 tilde. So, we get in this case y into 1 plus y prime square equal to a and so y is a over 1 plus y prime square. So, if you take y prime equal to cotangent 
t here as a parametric representation, we see that uh, y comes out to be uh, a. So, if this gives you cosec square. So, uh, you get sin square t here and then writing it as uh, using the formula cos 2 t equal to 1 minus 2 sin square t. So, this implies that sin square t is 1 minus cos 2 t by 2. So, we get y as a into a by 2 to 1 minus cos 2 t. Then we need to get x in terms of t. So, d x by d t is same thing as d x by d y and then d y by d t here. Okay. So, d x over d y is then inverse of that. So, tan t and d y by uh, d t will be into a by 2 and then you have differentiation of this will give you plus sign and here you have sin 2 t into 2. So, this gives you tan t a into tan t into sin 2 t. So, this is a 2 a sin t and uh, you will have uh, this upon cos t into sin t cos t cos t cancel. So, 2 a sin square So, then writing this as again a and 2 sin square t as 1 minus because sin square t is written here 2 sin square t as 1 into. So, we write a by 2 and here 2 t and then you get minus sin 2 t by 2 and so that 2 we have taken out. So, we get the parametric form like this. Thus, x is a by 2, 2 t we write as t tilde minus sin t tilde and where t tilde is 2 t, t tilde is 2 t. Cycloid. So, extremals are cycloid in this case, which is as expected, which was mentioned in the first lecture.